All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we are going to be learning about the um, urban legend kind of of Bloody Mary. I know a lot of you guys have probably heard the stories or you heard that the, you know, if you, what you're supposed to do and, you know, turn off the light in the bathroom or anything like that. But I asked in class, how many of you guys know who she was? And not just the previous class, but classes in the past, um, basically nobody knows who she is. And that's what today's class is part of is going to be about. We're going to learn out who she was and what's her role in history. Okay. Um, then the second half is going to be about the redemption of the church, the Catholic church. Because if you remember, this unit has basically been about how the church was seen at the beginning you know, by the peasants as, you know, the salvation for your soul, things like that. And then came the Dark Ages, the um, the plague, and how the church basically, in a sense, kind of turned their backs on the people. And how the people kind of didn't really start realizing what the church was doing and things like that. So we're going to talk about that. Okay. So again, the objective today, we're going to analyze how Mary came to power over Edward VI. Uh, we're going to examine again the legend of Bloody Mary. Why is she called that? And you know, we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to create an argument on whether the Catholic Church did enough to correct their mistakes. Okay, so um, that's what we're doing today. So let's go ahead and get to the warm up. All right, so here is your warm up picture. The first question is um, what do you think is going on here? Okay, so analyze the picture, look at all the people, um, look at the background, foreground, you know, what's going on here? What do you think? Okay, the second question is, does it look like these people like what they're hearing or don't like what they're hearing or, you know, kind of in one ear, out the other, or are they like, attentive? Are they listening? You know, so you tell me based off you well, your judgment of how they look, okay? So uh, go ahead, write your response to these questions, uh, but we're going to move on. So pause the video if you're not done. We're going to move on in three, two, one. All right, so last lesson, we were talking about Henry VIII and how he was basically wanting a son. Uh, and if you remember, Catherine of Aragon, they had a kid together, which was named Mary. Now, Usually, typically, the son is supposed to be the next up in line. But the thing is, when Henry VIII died, his son, Edward VI, from his third wife, um, he was only like eight, nine years old. He was a kid, you know. So there were some people who felt that, you know, he's not old enough to be king. He doesn't know anything. Mary, on the other hand, was already older. She was basically trained and taught how to be a queen, you know, and taught um, diplomacy, things like that, what it makes, what it takes to be a king, queen, you know. So there were some people who were like, you know, we need to put her in power, okay? Now, again, she took over in 1553, and if you remember from the last lesson, Henry VIII wanted a uh, divorce from Catherine of Aragon, but the Catholic Church said no. And that's when he basically said the Catholic Church is no longer the official Church of England. You know, we're going to start a new church, the Church of England, and I'm going to be the Pope. Well, quote unquote Pope. Um, so when he died and Mary comes in, she was born a Catholic. She practiced Catholicism. And she wanted to bring it back into England. Here's the thing, though. There were some people who were like, you know what? No, we, we don't want, you know, to be told you have to be Catholic. You know, it's kind of nice to be like, we get to choose, you know, type of thing. You know, um, but that's the thing. Some people didn't want it. She insisted on it, kind of forced it on them, and people revolted. OK, and I, I'm sure you guys know when someone tries to make you do something, a lot of times people tend to, tend to fight back. And that's what happened. 
Well, she decided to punish those people. And there was about 300 people that she burned at the stake. All right? She burned them as heretics. And heretics basically are people who um, either go against God or don't believe in God type of thing. And it's because of this, she got the nickname Bloody Mary. You know, people said, oh, she's bloodthirsty. You know, oh, she's she's just killing people, you know, who disagree with her. Um, and this kind of pushed more people to the Protestant religion as opposed to the Catholic religion. You know, so it kind of her, um, because they didn't like her and because of what she was doing, people started going more to a Protestant. Okay. All right, so here is your first question. Uh, should a child, and when I mean child, like someone under 18, should they be allowed to be a king or queen of a country? What do you think? Okay, should someone from like, from age eight to like 18 in that range, should they be allowed to run a country? What do you think? Why or why not? Okay, so be sure you back up your um, ideas with some... Um, with some facts, you know, or some solid, at least some solid evidence, you know. So don't just put yes or no. Back it up. Why? Okay. So go ahead and continue writing. Uh, but we're going to move on in three, two, one. So here's the thing, though. Um, I'm trying to make a case for um, Mary because the thing is, People said, oh, she's, you know, she's bloody Mary. She's bloodthirsty. Well, here's the thing. Her father, Henry VIII, and her half-sister, Elizabeth I, they persecuted and executed more people than her. Okay? They went after some people. Uh, when people said, oh, you know, um, they didn't kill people for being against God. Yeah, they did. Henry VIII killed 81 people. Claiming that it was heresy. You know, granted it wasn't 300, but to say that she did, or no one else did, yeah, they did. You know, um, Mary the, uh, Elizabeth I, you see the picture right there, she hanged and quartered people who, for religious reasons, but the thing is, she did it kind of smart, in a smart sense. She said anyone who practices or is in training to be a Catholic priest, or if you sheltered one, you try to kind of hid one, um, you'd be convicted of treason. Now, treason is something different than heresy. Treason is going against the country. Okay. Now, that is something that a lot of people don't want to be associated with at all. You know, being a traitor to your own country. So a lot of people kind of like, ooh, yeah, oh, that person's a uh, when they find out, oh, how did this person get killed, or why did they get killed, um, they would say, oh, they were a traitor. Oh, well, yeah, they deserved it. Yeah, so she kind of took the word heresy and said, no, 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 I'm going to put traitor instead. And that way people would be like, oh, well, she killed 5,000 traitors. I'm just throwing out that number. Um, and it wouldn't sound as bad, you know. Um, so again, still to this day, people know more about Bloody Mary than they do about the Inquisition. And the Inquisition, they killed a bunch of people, if you remember from several lessons ago. Um, the Inquisition, a lot of people don't know. Some people never heard of it. But you ask people about Bloody Mary, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you go in the bathroom, you turn off the light, and you say the name, you know, things like that. Um so people know that, but they don't know who she was or why she got the name. Now you do. Okay. So here's my question to you. Do you think that she truly deserved to be called Bloody Mary or Bloodthirsty? You know, or was she a victim of exaggeration? You know, uh, some people say, oh, she's bloodthirsty. Well, her dad and her sister... They killed more people, you know. So do you think that, um, again, she did kill people. Not going to lie, she did. So would you, do you think that 
nickname was justified or was it kind of people ignoring the facts? You know, that her dad and sister killed more people. And then why do you believe this? Okay, so there's a writing prompt on the bottom to help you out if you don't know how to start off the sentence. Okay, so uh, go ahead and write your response, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so here's the thing. A Spanish nobleman, remember these noblemen were people who were um, up in power and money and things like that. His name was Ignatius of Loyola. Lo 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 Sorry, I had that. I was pre practicing it before I turned on the video again. I was doing it, but now I just messed it up. <laughs> he was the founder of the Society of Jesus. Um, they're known as the Jesuits, okay? Now, the thing is, this group um, basically were kind of spreading the word about Jesus and things like that, and uh, they were doing some pretty good things. So what happened is Pope Paul III in 1540 basically told the Catholic people, this group is doing good stuff, you know? So the church officially recognizes this group. And they basically then took a absolute obedience vow to the Pope. Okay. Now, what their thing is, is they used education to spread the word of Jesus. Okay. They went to different places, places where um, there wasn't much education going on, no schools, things like that. Um, places where people were doing things from several hundred years ago and it's like no we have better techniques to grow stuff to build things to create stuff so that's how they spread the word they educated people but they also then kind of slipped in religion at the same time okay now these guys were on missionary groups they went from place to place to place to place to place um basically restoring Catholicism around the world because again remember some people were just like you know they they're doing horrible things you know they did bad things in the past now they're trying to come back and do good things trying to uh, give the name of Catholics a better name you know because again they kind of did some bad stuff before okay so Pope Paul III, which is that guy right there in that picture, he basically said, okay, you know what? We did make some mistakes in the past. Um, let's see if we can fix these. And he basically commissioned church leaders to reform the church. Basically say, what can we fix up? What can we do that makes it the church better? You know, correct some of these errors that we've made in the past. So in March 1545, some cardinals, our bishop, bishops, abbots, theologians, which are people who study about religion and uh, God and some like of that, they met, they got together off and on, um, talking about things for 15 years. And they met in the city of Trent. Okay. And then finally they come to an agreement like, okay, we all agreed this is the best course of action, this is how we're going to fix our mistakes. So, the first thing they decided was this. Um, the way to go to heaven is by, one, having faith, and two, doing good things here on earth. Okay? That's how you go to heaven. You need faith, and you need to good, be basically a good person, do good things, you know, donate, um, give your time to people, Show compassion, things like that, okay? Um, the other thing they agreed on was the seven sacraments. Again, this is something that if you're Catholic, you um, may have heard of this stuff. If you're not, um, just this is what it is. Um, basically, the Eucharist, um, the bread and wine of Jesus, things like that, um, that that is going to be upheld. They're still going to do that. Um, that they're still going to, you know, go through the motions of um, 
Jesus with the Last Supper, things like that. You know, give the wine and the, the bread to the people. They're still going to do that stuff, okay? The last one is probably one of the things that got a lot of people going, okay, this is good. The selling of indulgence. So if you remember, uh, I think it was last lesson or maybe the one before um i think it was martin luther i think that was the one before that this priest or this i'm sorry this um guy representing the church basically said if you have money if you give money to the church your family's um somebody in your family say your great grandpa you know if you give money to the church his sins will be forgiven and he'll go to heaven so you can basically buy your way into heaven. That last, that was called indulgence. They're basically saying, no, you, you, that's not how it works. You can't just buy your way into heaven. Just because you have money? No. No. So they got rid of that. Okay, so those things brought back people to the church. Now, my question to you is, what do you think brought back more people? Was it the idea that they said, hey, it's officially that if you have faith and you do good things, you'll go to heaven? Do you think that brought more people back? Or do you think it was the church finally saying, you can't buy your way into heaven? Which one do you think brought more people back? Making it official, saying if you're, you have faith and you're a good person, you'll go to heaven? Or them finally saying, you can't buy your way into heaven. Which one do you think brought more people back to the church? Okay, because it did work. People's, people did come back. But which one do you think would make people go, okay, I'm going to give them a second chance. Because they said this. You know. So what do you think? Okay, again, it's, um, I guess, you know. Basically, ask yourself which one you think more likely would bring people back. Okay, there is no right or wrong answer. Um, that's a question I was um, <laughs> I was asked. You know, uh, is there a right answer? No, it's just well, I want to know what you think. Between those two, which one do you think most people said? Okay, I like that. I'm going to go back because they officially said this. Okay. So, all right, so now we come to the exit ticket question. Um, so remember, answer only one of these two questions. Um, the first one is, why would it be, it be smart to incorporate beliefs when teaching? Why do you think that they do this? You know, um, the thing is, I have seen this before, you know, in classrooms when I've observed or um, when I was a you know substitute things like that or co-teaching um, I saw some teachers do stuff like that and then they try to put their agenda tell students what to believe in like this is what you should believe in politics or you know this is this is right this is wrong type of thing um, you know that type of stuff it happens Okay, so my question to you is, why would it be smart to incorporate beliefs when teaching other people, whether it's kids or adults or whatever? Why is teaching, uh, why is that a smart way to incorporate beliefs? Okay, the second one is, do you think the Catholic Church did enough to win back people's trust? You know, because you have to remember, they back in the early times made people believe that hey this is the only way to save your soul is to go to church every day do this and that and then when the black plague hit you know people were saying oh you know forgive us you know give us a confession to you know so um you know, we, if we die we can go to heaven or this person's dying can you give them their last rites and the church turned their backs on people and then they come back saying too that you can buy your way into heaven. It's not necessarily you have to do good things. If you have the money, you can go to heaven. And don't forget, during the Inquisition, they tortured people into 
making them become um, Catholic and Christian. So they did a lot of bad things. So with now that they've officially flipped it and said, okay, you have the faith and you do good things, you go to heaven and you can't buy your way into heaven. Um, do you think that's that was enough to get people to come back? Why am I not? Okay. So that is it. Okay. Um, next class, we're going to be starting the French Revolution. So if you um, basically like chaos, <laughs> this is the, this will be the section for you. Okay. So um, you guys, you know, take care, be safe. Okay. And I'll see you guys later. All right.